in one of the bombardments in Syria, a, a TV presenter was actually killed, I think, while she was on air. So, when you attack Lebanon, I told my people on X that the moment the attack begins on Lebanon, Syria was going to be connected to it, and then from Syria is going to reach Iran. Because if Iran is completely sponsoring Hezbollah, yeah, Iran is the one sponsoring Hezbollah. If that is the case, and Hezbollah is in Lebanon and is in Syria, definitely every single thing that Hezbollah uses is going to be deemed as coming from Iran. So attacking Hezbollah means attacking Iran. And if you attack Iran directly, you are also attacking Russia. And guess what? It's not just Russia. There is Turkey waiting in the wings. There are a few other people like Yemen, like Syria, and other Arab countries that you're not hearing their names now that are also waiting, that are going to fight on the side of Iran. I want us to watch this video. I will be back. But let me just see how much I can unpack for you. So on the day that uh, Iran made history and sent such massively destructive missiles to Israel. I had made a post earlier on that day and I had told people to watch out for what was to come, which I had spoken to them about earlier on X and told them that uh, the Israeli Defense Forces entering into Lebanon for ground incursion should be marked as the beginning of the final and the most critical phase of the third world war i hate to say this most of the time but i cannot help but just say what i know all right so shortly after i made that post <laughs> a lot of people were telling me oh but how can iran be involved this is something between israel and hezbollah and <laughs> I mean, it was amazing to see that people don't even know how deeply entrenched. I mean, the fact that it's even Iran that completely sponsors Hezbollah. Iran owns Hezbollah. They are called the axis of resistance, okay, against Western imperialism in that region. That's why they were set up, okay? So Iran funds Hezbollah. That's why when Hassan Nasrallah, the head of Hezbollah, was killed in the bunker where he was, where they killed him, they had members of the IRGC, the Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps, members of that organization, that military wing, were there with Hassan Nasrallah in Lebanon. And they were all eliminated with almost all the entire leadership of Hezbollah. That was one of the most devastating blows that anyone could have dealt Iran. And so when Israel was ready to retaliate this time for that, everybody was expecting, okay, maybe they're going to do something. Maybe it's going to take them a while. But it didn't take so long. And what triggered the response of Israel was the ground invasion of Lebanon by the IDF. So Iran then decided, okay, we're going to just do it now. And they, did, they gave the intelligence line out about their planned attack. And they gave only a few hours before they executed. When the news broke out and it went all over to the places, to Iran, no, sorry, to America, to Israel, it didn't take just only a few hours and boom, the missiles began to drop. But look at what is different this time around. It wasn't like one of those tit for tat kind of missile attacks where the intelligence agencies will go in the background and begin to coordinate responses from each member state so that it doesn't become too much of a, a disastrous confrontation. They, they tell you, okay, so you're just going to have to fire like two or three or five missiles and then you respond with just one or two and, and then everything is going to be fine. Then nobody does anything else. No, this was different. Iran decided we're going to break every single one of those rule, rules or code and we're going to go straight up and attack and strike Israel where it hurts the most. And I can't tell you now that I, that I believe that Israel was aware this was going to happen, that they knew it was going to be this devastating. 
um, the Mossad, the Israeli intelligence agency, the Mossad office was attacked. The ne Nevatim also air base was attacked. A lot of destruction caused there. So many different places in Israel were attacked. And there was remarkable damage to all of these places. And the funny thing is, Iran used hypersonic missiles. When you have hypersonic missiles, anybody that knows about the art of war or war in modern history or war in the 21st century, hypersonic missiles will send shells down your spine. Nobody wants to encounter hypersonics. They are very fast. They are very lethal and they know how to dodge and bypass iron domes. No wonder the Israeli iron dome appeared to have just missed so many of the missiles that fell into Israel. Now, two things. It's either that is the reason or this might be one of those planned, well orchestrated things that they would do just to allow for maximum damage so that when Israel retaliates, the retaliation will be justified in the eyes of the whole world. Okay? Because if the Iron Dome picks up everything and there's not enough damage, you won't be able to go and retaliate and hit Iran hard. So there could be a plan to make this happen so that when they hit Iran, everybody will say, yeah, that serves them right. Look what they did to Israel. That's one. Another could also be that they didn't know that was going to happen. And then because of the level of the sophistication of the missiles that Iran used, they were able to bypass the Iron Dome. But here is where we are right now. All that has happened. Israel is already making plans. They've already said we're going to respond. And the retaliation is going to be heavy. Now, here is where the trigger for the Third World War begins to make sense to you. In case it hasn't made sense to you. NATO and the United States of America are with Israel. America has plenty of warships, aircraft carriers that are there already. They have been there for months in the region to support Israel. NATO forces have their own military weapons and personnel in that place. Can you believe that just recently, despite the number of American soldiers that are already in the region, America recently sent an additional 3,000 boots on ground to the region. And when Iran eventually struck, I think they also sent additional personnel to the region. Why are they sending all these people? The fighter jets, the aircraft carriers, and all the other weaponry that you cannot even imagine, they are all on ground from the United States of America. It's because every war that Israel embarks on now, America is bound to fight with them. And they're not hiding it. Joe Biden has told you openly that they're going to fight with Israel. In fact, when Houthis send missiles from Yemen, okay, Houthi rebels send missiles from Yemen to Israel, American warships in the high sea actually help to intercept and destroy those missiles. That's what they have been doing. That's what they have been doing. So they are involved in everything going on. And guess what? Iran just broke record again after this attack to show you that this is different from what happened the last time. Okay? When they killed Hanir. Iran just made history by going to Doha to say to America through Doha that the era of us having to wait and be patient after an Israeli strike is over. That the moment we see a retaliatory strike from Israel this time around, we are going to hit Israel so hard that they will not believe what happened to them. So they are going to unleash on Israel with the weapons that we have not even seen. Weapons way beyond what we saw, even beyond the hypersonic that we saw when they struck Israel recently. And guess what? Iran is not alone. Recently, Iran smartly went into some security agreement or partnership with Russia. Iran has a serious relationship with Russia. And even if there was no security pact, for sending thousands of Shahed drones that Russia used to deal a lot of blows to, uh, to Ukraine, Iran, Iran will definitely have Russia's backing in anything they do. Russia would definitely want to support them. They will not let anybody attack Iran and go scot-free. 
because Iran supported Russia. Even when the West put them under pressure, threatened them with sanctions and everything, they kept sending those Shahed drones to Russia. And those Shahed drones really, really tamed the Ukrainians on the battlefield. And the West has not forg forgiven Iran for that till this day. Now, look what happened. Russia has serious a serious base in Syria. And remember that as Israel is bombing uh, Lebanon and fighting the Hezbollah guys there, they are also sending missiles and bombing locations inside of Syria. In, in one of the bombardments in Syria, a, a TV presenter was actually killed, I think, while she was on air. So when you attack Lebanon, I told my people on X that the moment the attack begins on Lebanon, Syria was going to be connected to it, and then from Syria is going to reach Iran. Because if Iran is completely sponsoring Hezbollah, yeah, Iran is the one sponsoring Hezbollah. If that is the case, and Hezbollah is in Lebanon and is in Syria, definitely every single thing that Hezbollah uses is going to be deemed as coming from Iran. So attacking Hezbollah means attacking Iran. And if you attack Iran directly, you are also attacking Russia. And guess what? It's not just Russia. There is Turkey waiting in the wings. There are a few other people like Yemen, like Syria, and other Arab countries that you're not hearing their names now that are also waiting, that are going to fight on the side of Iran. So Iran has got so many things that are emboldening them to say, we are ready for you, Israel. If you want to mess around, we're ready for all that mess. We can't take it anymore. And this is why you will see that the moment Iran fired missiles into Israel, remember very clearly that the first statement we got from Israel was that tonight we are going to respond and show Iran how we feel about this nonsense they have done. From saying tonight, the next thing we heard was, we will do this retaliatory strike at, our, at a time of our own choosing. I knew that this was going to now enter into the next phase. And that next phase is planning because they have seen that this is no longer a tit for tat kind of thing. It's not tit for tat anymore. This is serious business right here because a lot has been destroyed in Israel. And this happened just right after there was a mass shooting in Israel. So it was like a back-to-back -back blow on Israel. So this is not the kind of thing you just respond to immediately. And then given that America is going to provide support and need to provide adequate support, and given that the targets that Israel is looking to strike in Iran are targets that if they strike, Iran will go for all-out war and the whole Middle East will be set on fire. Israel cannot just do that on that same night. They have to plan with the security partners, which is the NATO allies and the American allies. And that planning is what is going on right now. Everybody believes that Israel has a right to defend itself. Everybody believes that Israel is going to strike and hit Iran hard. What we don't know is what targets are they going to hit in Iran. I remember hearing Benjamin Netanyahu in a speech right before this Iranian attack saying that Iran can never be allowed to have nuclear weapon. Iran has been developing its nuclear weapons for such a long time and only God knows whether they have it already fully developed or whether they are very close to finishing now. And you know that when you have nuclear weapon, you have become a player in the global community. You have become one of those who can eat on the same table with the big boys. I say this a lot when I post on X. Weapons, nuclear weapon is what qualifies you to yell at anybody. It could be NATO, it could be America, and nobody will say anything to you. In fact, people will be begging you, why take it easy? Let's, let's have a chat, let's talk. If you don't have nuclear, nobody, they treat you like you are a slave. That's why Africa has never been allowed to have nuclear weapons. When Gaddafi was developing it, they made sure that Gaddafi dismantled and discontinued the process before they took him out. Because while he was doing it, they knew that this would be the first time an African country was... The, the only African country that has nuclear today on commercial, for commercial use is South Africa. 
no other African country. Gaddafi would have been the first person to have what Iran has been trying to get. And that would have made them the only superpower, completely independent superpower on the continent of Africa. They waved the carrot of peace in front of him and convinced him to disarm and to discontinue. He did. And the very next minute, they took him out. So Israel is very agitated and wary of Iran becoming a nuclear power. And you can imagine how desperate they are to take out that nuclear facility. And it looks like that would be the first place to target. And that's why you see America now saying, I don't support Israel trying to target Iranian nuclear facilities. Because that will spell doom. It will be a fight to finish. Even the oil facilities. So Iran has said it clear. Anything you strike will strike double of it in your own place. So this war that you see looming now is going to be very, very devastating. Recently, just early this morning when I woke up, we heard that in one of those strikes that Israel conducts in the territory of Syria, that they struck a Russian air base. They struck a Russian base, military base rather, inside of Syria. There was another report that came out and said, oh no, that it was actually an Iranian plane that came there to bring stuff for Hezbollah that they saw and they began to strike the place where they were offloading the weapons because now they are not allowing any Iranian planes to land in Lebanon. Yeah, Israel has already decided no plane from Iran will land. In fact, this was done even before they made the ground incursion when they were still having the, uh, uh, the, the bombing campaign at the initial stage before the ground incursion happened. Now, that's what they said. But what we have in the news is that a Russian military base was impacted by the bombing and shortly after that we see a russian ambassador to israel telling russians in israel to please make haste and get out of israel while there is still flight between moscow and tel aviv can you imagine that this actually happened the video is on my tl on x they are telling them to get out of Israel. So when that happens, you know that something very big is about to go down. Because the reason I believe something big is about to go down is that, as it is right now, if Israel does not retaliate, Israel will become weakened in the eyes of their people and in the eyes of the international community. It would be that Iran has won because what they thought was going to be a mild warning to Israel turned out to be a massive destructive strike on Israel. So can you imagine the Mossad office being targeted and the air base targeted and there are even claims today that some fighter jets were destroyed? Are you kidding me? That's serious stuff for Israel. And if Israel also retaliates the way they want to, Iran is going to hit them back. And as they're hitting them back, they're going to begin to attack everything. So in this crossfire that is about to happen, American bases, as Iran has said, that the moment America begins to join Israel or helps Israel to attack or retaliate against it, against Iran, that every single American base in the region is going to receive fire. They are going to burn all of them and sink their ship. In fact, the Yemen uh, Yemen Houthis, Houthi rebels, have already, in fact, there's even a British ship, oil tanker, that was, that was hit just a few hours ago, and I think the tank has even sunken already in the, in the sea, in the, on the high sea. So this is the level of escalation that everybody is expecting. Now, if America, if Israel goes after Iran in, retaliate, in, in a retaliatory attack, you can be sure that there's no way America is not, not going to provide support. They can't do it alone. America will be a part of it. And if America is a part of it, that means that immediately American uh, bases in the area will start receiving fire from Iran. And all the people that work for Iran, all those have, uh, uh, groups that are affiliated to Iran, that are sponsored by Iran, like the Yemen Houthis and, and the Hezbollah guys and all these other groups that we don't even know their names, they will begin to attack American base in that region. And of course, you know that when... Israel begins to strike in Syria and some other locations. They are going to also hit Russian bases. And then Russia is going to get involved. 
And that's why they are telling you, Russians, get out of Israel. So when that happens, you can now see that the fight that we were trying to avoid in Ukraine has now come to Israel. But you know, Americans know that if they get involved in this war now in the Middle East, it is Russia's gain. That means they are going to stretch themselves thin and then they will leave Ukraine out in the cold naked. So what they want to do, I believe, is they will probably you will probably see an escalation from Ukraine where a certain missile might leave Ukraine and go to the center of Moscow. If a missile leaves Ukraine and goes to Moscow, that will become a massive distraction and will engage Moscow because right now Russia has an upper hand. The upper hand Russia has is that it has a fighting force in Iran. There's a force in Syria. They are going to engage almost everything America has in terms of military armament is right now in the Middle East to support Israel. So when you hold them down there, how much can they support Ukraine? Russia would just have a free reign and just take over, take over, take over all over. The, and they cannot afford to use to lose Ukraine. They have been trying to get Russia to engage in a battle with Ukraine that will draw NATO into it. Russia has so far resisted the temptation. And right now, it is them rather that have been drawn into a battle by Iran, surprisingly. Remember, there was a time when this thing was about to happen, we, 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 we saw that Benjamin Netanyahu's office had requested to speak with Vladimir Putin. And it happened that eventually they, made, they had that call and he spoke with Putin. But we don't know what they talked about. Somebody was saying that it was because of the, um, the uh, Russian weapons that they are seeing in the place of battle that are being used by Hezbollah or that are going into Syria to be used against Israel. Maybe that's why he was calling. And others say no, that the reason he was calling was because he wanted to know the position of Russia in what was going on. You understand? But everybody knows Russia's position. Russia has been very clear about it. We've seen a lot. The Russian prime minister was in Iran days before Israel made the incursion into Lebanon. They were in Iran shortly after Hezbollah, a leader, was killed. They have a good, good relationship that will imply that if anybody touches Iran, Russia is going to get involved and fight on the side of Iran. And look at another thing that just happened. So the Iranian president, I told you, he went to Doha and sent a message to America and said to America, we will no longer exercise any restraint or patience over Israeli attacks, that any move that Israel makes to retaliate, we have only just expressed our anger over the extrajudicial killings of our people. But if Israel dares to retaliate, that we will hit Israel so hard that they will know what hit them. And after saying that, in the end, Saudi Arabia, Doha, I think, UAE, and a bunch of all these um, Gulf states and Muslim countries suddenly, surprisingly, came out and said they are going to maintain neutrality towards Iran. And what does that mean? What it means is that America cannot even use the military air bases in those countries to send um, strikes to Iran. Because usually, if they, don't, if they didn't say that, America can easily t fly their jets from maybe Saudi Arabia or from any nearby Doha to go and strike in Iran. But right now, because of the neutrality statement that they have committed to now towards Iran, nobody can do it. America cannot do that anymore. That is such a massive news because before now, nobody would have thought or expected that something like this would happen. But it just happened. They have said it clear. We are going to be neutral. So at the end of the day, you are seeing a situation where Israel and the United States of America will have to plan extensively before they attack any spot in Iran. If you ask me, I would say the best thing would have just been to say, you know what? Let's lick our wounds, swallow our pride, and just let it slide. We made them suffer this same thing the last time. 
when everybody was expecting Iran to hit Israel hard and Iran didn't and people, they were, they were ridiculed by their people. I know it will amount to ridiculing Israel, but at the end of the day, it will save a lot of lives and save our world from eternal damnation. Because I've told people this thing, go and look it up for yourself. In a world war, the chances of survival are next to zero. And people don't die in millions, they die in billions. It's not something that, and I don't mean just world war, I mean a nuclear war. It's not something that anybody wants. At the end of the day, from the way I'm looking at this war, the DNA of this war is so clear to read. You can see clearly that this war is going to be a massively nuclear war from the onset. It's not even going to take, as from the beginning, you're going to start seeing nuclear exchanges. And this will not bode well for our world. The people who are behind pushing for this world to happen, they already have places of abode, places of safety in the underground bases that they have been building for decades. They have places they can run to. And then they are going to leave the rest of humanity to roast and die so they can start the fourth industrial revolution, which will be made up of robots and subhuman elements that will replace humanity on this earth. If you ask me again, I will say Israel should let this slide. People can ridicule all they want. When they finish, they will keep quiet. I know people will say, oh, that will embolden Iran. That will make Iran feel like they are too strong. And then they will start doing so many things in the region. It's not true. Israel is still carrying out their operations in Lebanon. They are still having the upper hand. Israel is still a powerful military. But you know what? I'm only just talking as a human being. But if you ask me what do you see in your heart, I can tell you that I do not see Benjamin Netanyahu pulling back. I see a retaliatory strike coming. But I believe that what is happening now is that they are planning extensively to make sure that once it is done, that everything is done surgically. And I think they are going to do it in such a way that they will cripple Iran and make Iran very, and make it very difficult for Iran to even rise up. But you know, it will also be difficult because Iran has so many secret underground bases where they have kept weapons, where I believe that no matter how powerful the intelligence agency is from Israel or America, I don't think they will get to know all of it. And given their partnership with Russia, they have supported Russia in Russia's time of need with Shahed drones. Russia is also supporting them with weapons that Russia knows will mess up the ships, American warships in the high sea, will mess up any kind of weapon you can things that will bypass the iron dome did you see what happened to the iron dome of israel i've talked about this already they have weapons that will bypass the iron dome and sink weapons that we have not heard about before israel knows about this and that's why you see them taking their time that's why america is also helping them to take and it doesn't mean that they don't have force on their own side they have so much firepower on their side if you look at what israel has and what america has you know america is like the policeman of the world they have so much military power okay but at the end of the day what will come from the other end and what israel is bringing at the end of the day is going to amount to two elephants fighting and then the rest of the humanity around will be the ones to suffer it I pray every day I wake up since that day, I've been saying to God, does that mean we have burned all our chances? If we have, then this will happen. But if we haven't, God, please step in and stop this madness. In closing, I remember that I said in my posts and even the last video that I made, that these guys are going to start something the moment they notice that Kamala Harris, okay, we're back to American politics again, that Kamala Harris is not doing well in the polls. And now, when I said it, people didn't believe me. Now it's become common knowledge. Everybody now knows, everybody can see it, that she's not doing well in the polls. Trump is all set to win by a massive landslide. Even with the rigging, it won't be difficult. It won't be easy to stop Trump. Now you can see if we are just inches away from starting a global war in which America will be deemed a party, what do you think is going to be the fate of the U.S. elections? Instantly, you're going to see them cancel the elections for November because they're going to tell you that the U.S. is in a state of war and there will be no need to change a commander-in-chief. I keep telling you they did it in Ukraine, which they control. Zelensky 
has not had an election and he's still the president. And his reason is you can't change a commander in chief in a time of war. This is what I see coming. All of these things are well orchestrated to bring our world to a halt because these people believe that they need to be in charge, completely in charge, so that they can impose on us ideals and evils that are very anti-human and that have nothing to do with common sense. Please join my Telegram platform by going to my description box. Click on the Telegram link. It will take you to the platform. Join us for us to talk about the well-being of Africa and Africans in diaspora. If today is also your first time coming to this channel, then don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification button so that any time I upload any great content, you will be notified. I'm always your guy, Digrafts Amwakon. Thanks for watching.